Hello, I'm Jay Haskamp, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. In today's session, we're going to adjust a closed loop traverse in Trimble Business Center. Trimble Business Center allows you to import, edit, and adjust traverses in the office. A traverse is a surveying method used to establish control networks that involves placing survey stations along a line or a path of travel, and then using the previously surveyed points as a base for observing the next point. A closed loop traverse is a traverse that starts and ends on the same point and is the type of traverse that we're going to adjust in Trimble Business Center today. A traverse is identified by the following station types, start and end stations and intermediate stations. Start and end stations fall into two categories. The first one is a station setup, such as a station setup or station setup plus that has been performed over a known point, or a station setup such as a resection that has been performed over an unknown point. In either case, the position of the station is known without any help from other stations in the traverse. The orientation of the station is also known independent of the traverse. Such stations serve as fixed input into the traverse adjustment and are not changed by the adjustment. The second category is a station setup such as a station setup or station setup plus that has been performed over a point for which the position was determined from the first or last intermediate station. The station backsites and foresights a point with a known position or azimuth the station setup cannot be computed independently from the traverse and this station will be adjusted by the traverse adjustment. Also note that when both the start and end stations are of this type, backsight and foresight points are the only known points and every station in the traverse will be adjusted. This is the weakest type of traverse because it has the least amount of fixed information. The second type of traverse station is the intermediate station. These are all the stations located between the start station and the end station. In all configurations, the points these stations are set up on will be adjusted. The first intermediate station is adjacent to the start and the last intermediate station is adjacent to the end station. In some cases, the end point will also be adjusted. Following is an example of a typical closed loop traverse in which the traverse starts and ends on the same point. The start station 1 is on a known point with a backsight 2 to a known coordinate or azimuth, number 3. The start station then foresights 4, the first intermediate station, number 5, and each intermediate station in turn backsights the previous station and foresights the next station. The last intermediate station, number 6, foresights the end station, which is the same as the start station or number 1. The end station then backsites the last intermediate station and foresights the known point number three that was backsighted from the start station. Some additional notes to consider for traverse adjustments. A traverse can end on a known point that is not occupied. It is only observed from the previous intermediate station when any of the station setup types are used as the start station. However, in this case, an angular misclosure cannot be computed. A traverse can also start on an unknown point with a backsight to a known point and end on an unknown point with a foresight to a known point. And lastly, some traverse dependencies. When creating or editing a traverse, an intermediate station in one traverse can also serve as the first or last station in a second traverse. This makes the second traverse dependent on the first one. This is because the adjustment of the first traverse puts traverse adjusted coordinates on all the intermediate station points, qualifying any of them as a start and end station for a second traverse. When traverses are automatically adjusted, the software recognizes these dependencies and adjusts the traverse in the proper sequence. If you are adjusting traverses manually, you need to keep dependencies in mind and adjust traverses in the proper sequence. Now, let's take a look at how we adjust a closed loop traverse in Trimble Business Center. Okay, so here you can see we have our closed loop traverse that we're now going to adjust in TBC. The first thing we want to do is look at our project settings and see what options we have to work with here. To do this, we're going to choose the project settings icon from the quick access toolbar. And in the project settings, we're going to choose computations, and Traverse. 
Here we have some various settings that we can manipulate. First, we have the manual horizontal tolerance and the manual vertical tolerance. What this means is that when these are exceeded, they indicate that the manually adjusted traverses should be recomputed. This is done by computing temporary coordinates as though the traverse were automatically computed and then comparing them to the current values. Next, we have the maximum angular misclosure per station. What this means is that this is the maximum angular misclosure per station allowed for the traverse adjustment before an out of tolerance flag is displayed. The value shown here is multiplied by the number of stations in the traverse. Next, we have the minimum horizontal precision and minimum vertical precision settings. These set the minimum horizontal and vertical precision for the traverse adjustment, which is the ratio of the traverse length to the horizontal and vertical misclosure. And then lastly, we have whether or not to use a weighted mean in the traverse adjustment. If we select yes, an observation and its reciprocal observation are combined with a weighted mean. The weighting is proportional to the number of the individual observations. If we select no, observations are combined with a simple mean. For this example, we're not going to make any changes. We're going to, we're going to keep the default. So we're going to pick cancel to close the project settings. Now we need to create a closed loop traverse. To do this, we're going to select the survey tab. And then under the optical group, we're going to choose adjust traverse. Under the adjust traverse pane, the first thing we need to do is give our traverse a name. We're going to call this Traverse 1 and then hit Create. Now we need to put the stations of our Traverse in our station list. You can see here that we have a drop down list that has all the stations in our project. We can either choose it from the list or under the Imported Files and the Project Explorer, we can choose it from the list here or we can simply just choose it from the plan view. In this example, our first station is going to be Station 1. Once we have it selected in the drop-down list, we're going to hit the plus symbol to add it to our list. Now a new drop-down list will show displaying the next possible intermediate stations in our traverse. In this example, we can either go to station 107 or we can go to station 108. If we look at our data set, we can see that 107 goes up this direction and 108 goes down this direction. I know that in the field this traverse was run in this manner going this direction, so 108 is going to be my obvious choice for my next station. I'm going to hit the plus symbol to add it, and notice now that it's automatically added 109 through 112 in my station list. What's happening here is that any time there is only one possible next station, it is automatically going to be selected by the software. If the automatically selected station itself only has one possible next station, it is automatically selected as well, and so on as necessary until we need to intervene and select between multiple station options. So you can see in this example, again, we have 108 through 112 were automatically selected. Now, the next station following 112 could be either station 113 or station 118, so we need to indicate our choice. Also notice that the observations between each of the stations added to the traverse is now highlighted in red in the plan view to make it more easily identifiable. So now we're going to choose station 118. We're going to add it to our list. You can see here now we have the selection of 119 or 117. We're going to continue with 119. And now notice it automatically populates the rest of our traverse all the way back to station number one. So if I zoom out here, you can see now that our whole closed loop traverse is now selected. And this is the traverse that we're going to adjust. Once we have our stations chosen, we are now ready to specify the orientation for the start and end stations under the start and end stations group boxes down below. Here we have two options available. If we select to use the station orientation checkbox, this specifies that the orientation for the start and or the end station is calculated automatically based on the station setup. By deselecting the Use Station Orientation checkbox, we specify that a back site for the start station and or the foresight of the end station. If we deselect the Use Station orient check Orientation checkbox and specify a back site for either the start station and or the end station, we'll now see that we get a drop down list that includes all the viable stations. Note that the azimuth is editable only if an azimuth was entered in the field and imported into the project. When creating a new traverse in the office, the azimuth is not editable. 
Because in this example, station number one was a station setup plus, which includes numerous observations, a good option might be to use the station orientation for the, both the start and end stations in this particular project. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep these two boxes checked and we're going to continue on. Now, down below in the settings group box, we can make any adjustment changes as necessary. The following possible options are adjusting the angles proportional to distance, which means more correction is applied to angles with shorter traverse lines than to angles with longer traverse lines. Equal proportions, which means an equal correction is applied to angles regardless of the length of the traverse lines. And none, which means that no angle measurement is performed. For this example, we're going to use proportional to distance. We also, under the adjust vertical, we have proportional to distance, which means more correction is applied to the elevations with longer traverse lines than the elevations with shorter traverse lines. Equal proportions, which means that equal correction is applied to elevations regardless of the length of the traverse lines. And then none, which means that no elevation adjustment is performed. So again, we're going to choose proportional to distance. Then, under our Adjust Horizontal Settings, we have the Compass Bowditch Adjustment. And in this adjustment method, it is assumed that the distances and directions are measured with consistent precision. We have the Transit Adjustment, which means that it is assumed that the directions are measured with higher precision than the distances. And then we have None, which means that no horizontal adjustment is going to be performed. For this example, we're going to choose the Compass Bowditch. And then under Mode, we have Adjust Manually or Adjust Automatically. If we choose Adjust Manually, whenever the project is computed, the Traverse Adjustment is also computed, but no changes to the current Traverse Adjusted coordinates are made. However, if a recomputed coordinate is out of tolerance with the current coordinate based on the project settings, a flag is placed on the station alerting you that you need to manually recompute the traverse using the Adjust Traverse command pane. If we choose Adjust Automatically, whenever the project is computed, the traverse adjustment is also computed and any changed traverse adjusted coordinates are saved. In this manner, the coordinates dynamically respond to the changes in the input data. So basically what we're saying here is if we're manipulating or modifying our project and we want our Traverse to update automatically with those changes, we're going to ad choose Adjust Automatically. If we want to hold our Traverse and we don't want our adjusted Traverse to change, we're going to choose Adjust Manually. And this is what we're going to choose for this example. Also, one thing to note is that when a project includes multiple Traverses that are set to be automatically adjusted, the software recognizes any dependencies that might exist and adjusts the traverses in the proper sequence. If you're adjusting traverses manually, you need to keep dependencies in mind and adjust traverses in the proper sequence. The last setting is status, and here we have enabled or disabled. Disabling a traverse retains the settings in the station list in the project, but for all other considerations, it behaves as though it has been deleted. So for example, this allows you to define two traverses that could not otherwise coexist. Possibly, um, you could define two traverses that share the same intermediate station. For this example, we're going to select Enabled. Now, we have all of our settings um, selected here. The first thing we want to do is select the Preview Results tab. The data displayed on the Preview Results tab does not affect the project until we click the Apply button down here at the bottom. Based on the results in the Preview Results tab, we can optionally make additional changes back on the Settings tab and again view the results on the Preview Results tab before clicking Apply to save any of our changes. Under the Preview Results tab, we see all of our settings um, based on the Settings tab. We see our list of stations, and then down at the bottom we have our misclosures uh, before and after the adjustment. So this is our opportunity to check over this information and make sure that it looks right. Everything looks okay here for what I'm doing. I'm going to pick Apply, and now I'm applying the Traverse Adjustment to my project. One thing to make note of is that when you create a Traverse, under your Project Explorer, you will now see a Traverse Networks um, heading pull up. And if I expand that, I can now see Traverse 1 in my list as an available option. I can pick Traverse 1, 
right click and choose properties and I can see all the properties of that particular traverse in my properties pane. In addition, each point that was adjusted as part of the traverse now includes a traverse adjusted coordinate record in the Project Explorer. So if I expand my points and I choose point 108, notice I now have a traverse adjusted coordinate for that point which I can now see in the properties pane. And now we can view the traverse adjustment report which can also help us further determine the success of our adjustment. So if I close my properties pane and I choose Traverse Adjustment Report. I will now see a report created in a separate tab. And this report gives me some additional information that uh, gives me an idea of how well my traverse has adjusted. And that concludes our Tech Talk on adjusting a closed loop traverse in Trimble Business Center. I hope that you found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Thank you.